You know, out of all the videos I've made in the past, like, three or so years, I would say, there hasn't been a video where, when I'm making it, the feeling of, yo, I am so going to regret making this video has been so heavy. Yeah, I can taste it. I think I'm probably going to really regret making this one. But we're in quarantine, we're in a spot where we're looking for things to talk about, and the last video in this trade proposal series was so talked about that it ended up becoming the punching bag of New York Islanders fans and New York Islanders editorial journalists, so much to the point that I saw Habs fans on Twitter defending me. I'm not going to get into that, I really don't want to talk about that, but... What I do want to talk about is a continuation, the second episode of NHL Trade Proposals in 2020. Before we get things underway, comment down your trade proposals in the comments. We will be using those as video discussion ideas. Please at least try to make them justifiable on both sides. I'm not going to say go realistic, because so far this video and the other video that we made, they're not really realistic, but there are ideas in place that I think are interesting to talk about. So comment down your proposals and please, if you can incorporate other teams, not just the Montreal Canadiens and the Red Wings, I would really appreciate that. I don't want to make just a long series of only Canadiens or only Red Wings proposals because so far, that's what I have gotten in the comments. Also, go to the community tab, check out that page as well, see the post I have over there and comment down trade proposals to be used in videos later. But in this video, we're going over a trade proposal that... Both fan bases of the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Detroit Red Wings are not going to like. And I think it's the trade ideas that both fan bases really aren't fond of that have the most ideas behind the discussions. So let's go over onto our community tab comment section and check out this comment over here from Obi Wan Brick 31. The Detroit Red Wings trade forward Anthony Manza a 2020 first first round pick and a 2022 first round pick for Steven Stamkos of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. Stamkos is a star. And in a world where this trade proposal goes down, I would also like to believe that there are flying cars and birds can talk to humans. This is not going to happen, but... The idea behind it is so interesting because I think both fan bases, upon knowing the existence of this idea, would take a look at it and say, yeah, you know, why the hell would we do that? There is no reason for us to trade Mantha for Stamkos, or there's no reason to acquire Anthony Mantha and draft picks. And the two philosophies battling themselves out right here are probably the most interesting thing about this idea. Now, from the Red Wings' point of view, if you wanted to take a look at this trade, Mantha and two firsts for Stamkos, what you're doing is you're trading good for great. You're taking Anthony Mantha, who is very good, and I think a lot of Lightning fans taking a look at this on the surface may not actually understand how good Mantha is. You're taking a look at a good player who can just get better and better, and you're trading him for a 30-year-old Steven Stamkos who was two points away from getting 100 a year ago. Sure, he's 30, I get that. Mantha is a younger guy, so if you want to build towards the future, Mantha is your player rather than Stamkos. Stamkos is much more suited for the now. And that's also kind of why the Lightning are in a position where they most likely would not even think about this idea. Hey, you know, if we want to win a Stanley Cup, we have to have Stamkos on our squad. That is a given. He is the captain. He has been here for so long. And if there's any time Tampa wins Lord Stanley's blessing, Stamkos is going to be a part of it 110%. But a trade like this is a trade that really would signify a change in direction for both of the teams involved. And the reason I say that is because... If the Red Wings are in a position to trade away a Mantha, and let's say the Lightning, when they acquire Mantha, they sign him to a contract extension worth however amount of dollars, they're in a position where they really, really want to shift the focus to the now. Because the trade proposal indicates the 2021st and 2022nd first round pick also going to Tampa, not the 2020 first round pick for this year. 
This means that if the Red Wings do this, let's say the playoffs go on, the Lightning end up winning the cup or they end up getting swept in the second round or whatever, whatever the outcome is, the Lightning get out of the playoffs and we're now in a second period where players are allowed to be traded. If the Red Wings decide to use their 2020 first overall or second overall pick on Lafreniere or Byfield or whatever, and you trade away a Mantha for a Stamkos, you still have a lot of cap space to sign that Taylor Hall or that Mike Hoffman or whatever. It would be a very interesting idea if Steve Eiserman were to say, yeah, you know, it's time to go in. We want to contend for a wildcard spot. We're getting Stamkos, we're getting Lafreniere, and we're getting another free agent in the process, and we're going to do that now. Obviously, that's not going to happen, but a change in direction is plausible if this trade goes through. And for the Lightning, on the other hand here, this is kind of where things get a little bit interesting. Steven Stamkos' contract was at $8.5 million. Anthony Mantha is in a position where he is an RFA, and many people are saying, you know, if the guy gets upwards of $8 million, let the team that signs him to that offer sheet take him, and we can get the picks back. Red Wings fans are in a position where Mantha isn't necessarily worth the amount of money that a Stamkos is. But if the Lightning want to sign this player, and they do it in Tampa Bay, you can probably get an Anthony Mantha for a much cheaper price. Mantha is 25 years old. He was just under a point per game on the worst team in the league, and he's a year younger than Nikita Kucherov. If the Lightning are in a position where they say, you know, we want to build this team around Kucherov and Point. Stamkos is the same age as Victor Hedman, I get that, but defense are usually a little bit more stable in terms of long-term projection than centers and right-wingers are, like a Stamkos is. So, if there is a decision-making process that results in Stamkos not being that guy that they would want to build around going into the next few years of playoff hockey, then getting a guy like Anthony Mantha, who is in the same age range as a point and a Kucherov, could be a little bit more beneficial. It's not like Mantha is bad anyway. Mantha was legitimately good, and he's on pace to becoming better. Which is why at the beginning I said, yeah, you're trading good for great if you're Detroit. You're trading a good Mantha and some draft picks for a really, really good Steven Stamkos, who, even though he is 30 years old, is still a very capable NHL player. If the Red Wings want to start contending now with Lafreniere, with a Stamkos, and with a free agent signing, and if the Tampa Bay Lightning want to contend with all their chips based onto their forward core a few years from now, then this trade is something that does boast justifications on both sides. Especially for Tampa, whose prospect pool isn't really all too deep, you would be getting first-round picks in 2021 and 2022. If the Red Wings are failing in winning games and they still kind of suck going into the next few years, then hey, you got yourself some good prospects that you can really use down the line or that you can trade for other valuable pieces. As one of the worst teams in the NHL, the Red Wings have the luxury of having value behind most of their draft picks, even going forward into the next few years. Even if those draft picks don't pan out being top 5 or top 7 draft picks, you still got first round draft picks. And that's something that the Lightning could honestly use a little bit more of. Prospects, long term players, and guys who can help them a few years down the road. I get that they put all their chips into developing the now because they want to win a cup now, but obviously if this trade proposal goes through, it's on the clause that both of these teams want to change directions. Which is why I'm saying that it's not going to go through because that's not going to happen. It's just hypotheticals, NHL trade proposals, you know, hypothetical videos. So. If this video is so frustrating to Lightning fans or Red Wings fans to the point where I see other articles written about it talking about how dumb I am making a video for it, then I don't know what to say. But I will say that the comment section is all your floor. Comment down below what you think about this trade proposal from either point of view. If you're a Lightning fan, would you be happy with this? If you're a Red Wings fan, would you be happy with this? Also, comment down your other trade proposals. Most preferably not involving the Canadians or the Red Wings because they have so many of those. So we can make videos about that stuff as the series goes on. But this was an introspective look at a hypothetical trade proposal. I hope you enjoyed this video. So that's Ross 99. And bye.